Tuning for Beginners lesson number 11. Yes, and this week we're doing something really a bit special. I'm ditching the cartooning and I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of graphic fine art. And I'm going to show you how to do one of my more classic uh, images, which is Girl with the Wind in her Hair. So this is a windswept girl, her, her hair's blowing off across her face. And she's on a beach, a classic McKee scene. And I'm going to show you how to draw it. And it's with using all our brilliant drawing skills from our previous lessons, all that confidence that we had with our penmanship now on the lesson 11, I'm showing you the big guns. But with this one, you're going to need actually a pencil and a rubber. I've been trying to avoid using those two. But eventually, as cartoonists, you're going to have to use pencils and rubbers. You're going to have to go out there and get hold of yourself of a pencil and a rubber because they are the most vital and important tools of a cartoonist. Because we make mistakes all the time, but at least we can erase them with the rubber and our ink lines will look absolutely pristine and clear and very deliberate. But it's all down to the rubber and the pencil. Thank you again for all your contributions. Uh, that you've been sending in. They're absolutely fantastic. Keep emailing them in to me, please, at pete at petemckee.com. Thanks for sharing every time uh, on social media too. All your shares are so important for me. You're brilliant. I love all your work. You're fantastic. Let's get cracking on with this. See you at the end of it all. There's a brilliant cartoon gallery again with all your contributions. So let's get cracking. <laughs> So before we get on with our first lesson, I just want to show you the sort of equipment that I use when I draw cartoons. So you've got an idea of what you'll be hoping to aim for at some point when you can get to a stationery. And just out of curiosity really, what the cartoon is used to draw with. Well, first off is the tried and trusted pencil. I like to use a, a 2B pencil. Uh, it doesn't matter what brand or variety you use. But 2B makes it just a little bit darker than the HB one, uh, but it's also good for rubbing out. Then for rubbing out, I use a plastic rubber, like one of these here. Doesn't have to be this brand, but that kind of rubber is kind of decent for rubbing out. But what I do with that, I don't use a full block. I'll slice a bit off with a, with a knife. Or you get your parents obviously to do that for you. So it's a, sort of a thin sliver, a bit like this chunky little block here. And it just means that it's a bit more flexible and it doesn't pull the paper so much when you rub your pencil out. And then when we're doing all the lining in, I like to use nylon fibre tip pencil, pens. And there's, so again, there's the Stadler one there. And then you've got this Pilot one, they're quite cool. And then this posh Japanese one as well. And they're on the ends they look like this. Little black tip there where the ink uh, nylon tip is. And at the ends there are numbers. Now there is a two and a three. Now they're quite thin, quite fine. I like to use zero eights and zero fives when I'm drawing because the lines are a bit thicker. And what's this one like? Well, that's almost uh, quite pointy, that one, so that'd be a really fine line. And that's fine, you can use those sort of thin ones, uh, but the thicker you get, the, the more graphic you can make your artwork. And that's round about it, but I think I'll be using a Sharpie for this lesson, so you can see what I'm doing. So let's get cracking. Right, so we're going to get cracking with this picture of the girl with the wind in her hair. And I'm going to just show you this on my phone, the picture that we're going to try and attempt. So it gives you some idea where you need to be with your piece of paper, which I want you to turn to portrait, which is standing upright. So you've got the long edges going down and the shorter edges at the top and the bottom of your piece of paper. And this is the image we're going to try and attempt. And it's girl with the wind in her hair. So as you can see, this is a million miles away from all the cartoon workshops we've done before. But like I say, I'm confident that we're going to be able to do this together because you have advanced so much over these last 10 lessons that I think we're going to be able to be all right with this. So first of all, what do we need? 
we need our pencil and we need to mark our head shape first and we're going to do a head shape that's a bit like an egg so I'm up near the top so I've got to give myself plenty of space so nice and light with my pencil I'm using this really big fat thick one so that you can see my pencil marks because so obviously they're a little bit lighter than my black ink pen that I like to use so it's like an egg shape but we're just sharpening off the bottom half of the egg squaring it off a little bit so it's around like an egg it comes down and then we're just bringing it in a bit tighter at this side now we use pencils all the time as cartoonists because it, we can then guide ourselves with a pencil where we want to put our black ink pen because if we make mistakes with our black ink pen there's no going back but we can make all our mistakes we want with this loop beautiful pencil so hopefully you've got your sort of egg shape on your piece of paper now what we need to do is divide that egg in half down the middle and then we want to divide that egg, egg again in half crossways so here we have so we know where the middle of our head is and we know where we're going to start with our eyes because our eyes tend to be in the middle of this large shape here so we're going to have our eyes on this line then we're going to divide this section in half again and then we're going to divide it again this section in half so it's half half and half so we divided the, the egg in the middle we then divide this section in half and then the final section in half there and these are our guides to where our eyes nose and mouth are going to be so we know our eyes are there so roughly halfway in going down if there was an imaginary line we'll make a mark where the eye is going to be and another mark where this eye is going to be so we're roughly the middle going down there so that's where our eyes are going to be we're doing a little line here where the nose would be so it's like almost like a shadow mark emphasizing this is where the nose is and then what we want here is a mouth shape so we do a little M like that if you can see and then underneath that just a, like a slight U and we can see almost like a lip shape going off there I might be slightly off center with mine even though I've done that center line but there we go and now we can do the ears like we have with the other cartoons characters in previous ones where the ears sort of start where the eyes are and we can fit them in with in between that line there for now so there's the basis of our character's head and you can use this technique again and again and again for other characters if you want to start doing posh sort of style drawings rather than extravagant um, versions for cartoons where there's no rules here we're keeping to some kind of classic rules and determination of where our head starts and our face and our, where we put our features now because it's a girl and in my style when I do girls I like to do long thin, thin necks it's a nice exaggeration so I'm going to extend my neck down my character a little bit and then what we'll do is put a little V shape so we can finish that off so we know that's where the shoulders are going to start once we put that V there that's our indication where the top is going to be on our character so we've got that now we've got the definition where the shoulders are going to be we can put the shoulders in and I want to just swing my shoulders out just past probably where the ear ends there so I'm bringing that out there and again there bring it out just a slight little curve if we can so there's our character's shoulders and we can just bring this going down ever so slightly inwards ever so slightly inwards can you see that how it's going going down ever so slightly and then we can put arms in we say the arms there so slightly out and down 
So the arms are down by the side of this person. So these are almost going straight down. Okay. Right, I'm looking at these eyes here. I'm gonna what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put ink over this soon. But this is just our basis of where we are with this character. I'm going to leave it at that because now we're going to put some more detail in. So now we're coming back and we're going to add some more detail and this is the hair. Now the hair is going to be kind of freestyle and this is where you're going to need some real kind of confidence with your pencil mark. So I'm taking this line here and then I'm going to swing it out and do like a nice free hand wobble there and that's the start of the hair and then I'm going to come back in again out round in round and bring it back down again and what this is going to be is her long hair is blowing in the wind but I've done it very stylized and then I'm going to bring this hairline in across and up and then what we can do, just to add an extra uh, emphasis on the windy day, is we put another line there, and that's her hair being blown across her face. And I've chosen to do it there. You might want to choose to bring your hair across this way, but I've just brought it across. Now this bit of the thing, the hair, is a bit that's going to take you a lot of practice. Because you may not get it right straight away. And what I do all the time is when I'm drawing my paintings up, is I'm making corrections all the time. I'm using my rubber and I'm rubbing out because it's important to get it right when you do. So you just need a bit of patience. So we've got the wind blowing now. And then we can just put a colour on this girl's top. Maybe we'll bring a line down the middle. So she looks like she's wearing a shirt. I'll put some buttons there. It's all a little bit of detail. We could even do that across here as well. So she's wearing the short sleeve top. Maybe. These are just added little extras. And if she's wearing a short sleeve top, we might want to put the arm in a little bit further in from where the t-shirt sleeve is. There. And when you get more confident with your drawing, you might want to do something with these arms, but I'm keeping it simple by down by your side so we know what we're up to. And if I just notice where her eyes are, while I've still got this pencil, I'm going to try and make it as though she's looking at us rather than looking away. And what you do again is you just trial and error using your pencil, using your rubber, just finding where it looks like that person's looking straight at you. And there's one thing I'm missing. And that's an eyebrow. So I'll bring the eyebrow in there. The line across the, the lips. And if you curl it up just so, so slightly, give an emphasis at the, either corner, you've given her a little Mona Lisa smile there. And there we've done the extra details. Now, the one thing that's left to do before we start inking all of this in is where we put the horizon line for the sea and wherever we put the horizon line will change how we look at the person the subject in our picture so if i did it low down here there's a lot of big blue sky so therefore she's more exposed and if we bring the horizon line up near the top then we're sort of focusing our eyes closer to her face so it becomes more intimate as a picture. So we'll do it that way. So I'm going to bring that horizon line across there. And we know this is the sea because I'm going to put a little bit of cliffs and land in there either outside. And they're pointing in towards our character. So it's bringing our eye further into our little character. And finally, I'm just going to do a wiggle just here to emphasize waves just lapping in 
on the sand. There, and so that's our penciled in part of our drawing. So now we've come to the fun part, which is lining in our cartoon character, our, our girl by the beach, the girl with the wind in her hair. And what we do is we identify all the lines we want to keep and ignore all the lines we don't want to keep. So I'm going to start off and sweep this round. Now I'm using for this a Sharpie. It's a bit too big really for what we, what we need. But I'm using it so you can see clearly what we're doing. So I'm picking out the lines that I want to keep. So that's one line I want to keep. I like this sweep here. So I'm going to bring that round there. And these are all okay. So that's good. So I'm trying to do this as smoothly and as continuing, one continuous sweep if I can. There we go. Now we ignore this line here because this is going to get coloured in. So we leave that out. And I can bring this down. And then I've got this line here, which I like to. I don't need to change that. I'll bring that back round. So I'll just colour that in. And the ear just pops out on that side. And the rear round on that side. Okay. Eyebrow. There we go. And then the eyes. Just a little line across. Just a little dot underneath. A line across. And a little dot underneath. That's all I need for that. And then just under there a little... No shadow. And then we just need to sort of neaten these lines out here, this jaw line. Just recorrect what I've done. Around there. Down and round nice and nice and smooth and relaxed. Just take a deep breath when you're doing these sort of things. And be as calm and as zen as possible when you're filling your lines in. Try and make it a nice relaxing uh, event. And now the little lips. Try and do this as light as possible. And that line under there, just so you can see. And if you want, do that little line, cutting it across. A little nick up, either way. Now, down with a V. We can do a little bit more confidence now. Shirt collar, swing the little shoulders out, bring that line down, and then maybe a little shirt thing there. See, I've ignored some of the lines I've already done because I'm confident that I can change those to what I want now. Now I've got that guide. I'll just put this arm down. Nice and thin. Oh, sorry. We're all set. And down again. And now we've got that. What I can do is do the horizon line. And a little cliffs on the edge. Maybe put a couple of seagulls in. And then just some wobbles for the water. And then another one there, so it's the foam for the waves. There we go. A couple of dots, sand. And if you wanted to, on my picture that I showed you on my phone, um, there she had polka dots on you can put a pattern on if you want that makes it just basically a little bit more detailed she's showing a little bit more finishing on your work so you can do that so random polka dots when you say random there's always an even space between each one that you do try to keep it if you keep it as even as possible when you're doing that and then when you hit a line you stop 
and back round again, start afresh. Even space, those three. That means there's one up here. A line there, so we stop there. And again there, even space. But off. And so on and so forth. We keep doing that all the way around. Nicely even, evenly spaced polka dots. Hit the arms. Doing that. Uh, oops. You get the picture. Keeping those spaces nice and even. And that's roughly it. And then what we want to do now is colour all this in black. So hopefully Charlie, who's editing this video for me, my son, will speed this bit up. There, hang on. Now I see this looks a little bit bold there, eh? which could actually may have shaved the side of her head off. She might be like a cyberpunk or something. But I will just bring that round. There, like that. And then what we could do is also colour these polka dots in. Different colours, you could do them black, you can do them red, you can colour all of this in. And then we could even put some clouds in. Nothing random here. So you want one there, you want one in. a little bit spaced on this side maybe. And then maybe one just up on this bit here. Nice and spaced out. And obviously sign it. A bit of water in there maybe. And just to emphasize what we're talking about, get the old rubber. And we rub out. Now I realize that you may not have a decent rubber which is unfortunate but at some point you will at some point you'll be able to go out and get yourself a nice rubber and a pencil and a pen so for now you might just end up with lots of little pencil lines over your great work of art but that doesn't matter for now at some point go out and get yourself a nice sort of uh, rubber and I don't know if I've got one to show you unfortunately I use but I cut mine down to make them uh, small and that means that they are, um, rub out better because they move a little bit so rather than using a big block cut a piece off it and you'll rub out better then you won't smudge everything and always hold on to your paper when you're rubbing or you'll crease your paper and there we have it there's our girl with a wind in a uh, Hair. Thank you. Hope you had a good, great lesson. Um, glad to see we're all getting a little bit more confident and experienced with our work. And let's see what you can come up with. Thank you and see you later.